So welcome back to our video series, episode six. In the last episode, which was a bit of a longer episode, we covered what a robust recruitment process looks like. Hopefully you've learned a few things and you've already started to apply some of those lessons learned. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how and who can help you lead a, a successful recruitment process. So basically, one way of doing it is to engage a recruitment agency. Okay, so the recruitment agency can help you assess your needs, potentially come up with an attractive job description, and definitely focusing on sourcing candidates. Okay, so typically that's where their key value add lies. Then they can help you potentially conduct initial interviews and, and come up with a shortlist. They typically don't sit in the interview with you, not train you on how to conduct an interview. Um, they can help you present an offer and support the negotiation process so that um, you can find an agreement with your future employee. A big disclaimer is often recruitment agencies are incentivized on a percentage of the annual remuneration of that ideal candidate. So the higher you pay, the better for them. Finally, they can't really help you because they sit as an external party with the onboarding of this new IR. A number of recruitment agencies are very transactional driven and wouldn't do any follow-up. So basically, as soon as you hire this person, they invoice you and then they mainly talk to you to see if you've got any other hire in the pipe. Um, but yeah, <coughs> recruitment agencies are definitely an option when you don't have internal HR and really limited um, capability or capacity to run a robust recruitment process because you know, as a founder, you have a number of other things to do, uh, even though this is very critical, hiring your next colleagues. Another option is hiring on creating an HR function. So typically, uh, and, and very recently, I spoke alongside um, the talent acquisition team for Koala, a very uh, successful Australian scale-up. They waited year three, and when they were probably 80 plus employees before creating this function internally. This is amazing. This is helping you with most of the steps, but basically this may be a strategic move a bit more down the track. There are also some limitation because typically it's very difficult to find versatile um, talent acquisition specialists who can recruit across all functions. Another option is do nothing. <laughs> Basically, continue to do everything by yourself. This is not impossible, you know. This is always very good to recruit with your guts. That's what I was doing at the very beginning, or recruit the first person who is crazy enough to, you know, uh, come and work with you. Um, but this may not be kind of sustainable as your startup grow. Uh, and also, you need to be mindful in terms of where you spend, spend your time where your expertise lie for you as a startup founder. And remember, the worst outcome is not, not hiring, is hiring the wrong person. Finally, you have a limited number of talent partners, so people who are genuinely aligned with you, incentivized on your long-term growth. That's how we define ourselves. With Science Talent, we define ourselves as talent partner helping you all along the way, being incentivized on the short term, but more importantly on the long term and the success of your company. To date, we've helped over 30 international and Australian startups to grow their team. So thanks for watching. We've covered the three 
mail options used to date by startups when recruiting. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about what's a talent partner, what it can do to help you in the short and long term when growing your team. Thank you for watching and see you at the next episode.